this is incredible, incredible criticism. The British tabloids are really doing a job on their English national team as they get set for the second game in U.S. Cup 93. England getting ready to face the U.S. squad with Ty Keogh. I'm John Paul Della Camera. It's hard to believe all of this criticism for this English team. They're still breathing, yet Graham Taylor seems to be in trouble, their head coach. The England national team having their most problems in World Cup qualifying matches. They're in behind Norway, who they lost to recently. They also have big games coming up against Holland and San Marino. And they need some excellent results and some good performances here to build confidence towards those World Cup qualifiers. Either that or they won't be here for World Cup 94 in the United States. Not as much criticism against Bora Milutinovic, the head coach of the U.S. national team, but a lot of the criticism is coming from the fact that the U.S. squad has not done a good job in terms of scoring goals. They've been shut out in their last three matches. That could change tonight. We'll see some changes in the lineups for both teams when we return to Foxborough. Welcome back, everyone, to our U.S. Cup 93 series, England versus USA. We'll have that momentarily from Foxborough Stadium. This is the second game in New England. We were still in New England on Sunday when U.S. Cup 93 opened up, and it opened up with Brazil taking on the United States, a heavily favored Brazil side, and they came out strong in the beginning, scoring an early goal off of a free kick. From the right wing side, it was Eli Velton finding an open man, Careca. And before the game was five minutes old, Careca had scored a goal. So it was one to nothing in favor of Brazil. Then Vink, a defender who had been a thorn in the side of the U.S. all day, came up with a second goal in the closing minutes of the game. So the standing show Brazil with two points, no one else with points up to now. The USA would like to break into the win column tonight as they take on England. Those are our U.S. Cup 93 standings. Time to take a look at the rosters, and Tony Miola remains in goal, but there are other changes tied for the U.S. But no changes in their back five. The U.S. using five defenders today. You're looking at Desmond Armstrong, the sweeper. And in midfield, there is some difference. Two guys that can bring some offensive spark. Thomas Dooley, number five. Number nine, Tab Ramos. Also, Eric Winalda. He's a real goal scorer, and the U.S. needs some help there. Now, on the opposite side for England, their coaches heavily criticized Graham Taylor. We'll see what changes he has in store for us. Well, they have. They've pulled Des Walker out of their defensive setup. Carlton Palmer back in there. He's normally a midfielder, but he can play in the back as well. And in the midfield, Paul Ince named the captain for the first time ever, number 11. And Nigel Clough will be uh, playing an attacking midfield role. John Barnes back in the England team, number 10. He'll be trying to provide some offensive punch for them. The United States squad coming out looking for the same result if they can that they got in 1950 when they shocked an English side by a one to nothing score. In the rain at Foxborough, we'll see if they can do that tonight. versus USA and it's next. Great atmosphere tonight in Foxborough, especially when you consider the threatening skies that we had moments ago. The skies just opened up. It was a tremendous downpour. The rain seems to have subsided for the moment, but that field will be soaking wet for England and the United States. Ty England will feel like they're right at home. These are conditions they normally play in. Exactly. It could be an advantage for them. We look at the England team with the changes that we mentioned. David Platt, Paul Gascoigne not available for this particular set of games in U.S. Cup 93, so they need to adjust there. This English side is a different side, or they have been, when Gascoigne has not been in the lineup. We'll see what happens today. Paul Ince is their captain. Quite an honor for Paul Ince, a speedster. Doesn't have a lot of experience in the national side. Only six full internationals. This will be his seventh one. He was named captain. I'm not sure if I'd want to be captain of this team. Platt was the captain. He was injured. He replaced the previous captain, Stuart Pierce, also injured. 
That armband has not been good luck to anyone well, on the, the English side. That's the reward there for a tremendous season for him at Manchester United. As we look at Graham Taylor under intense pressure, in fact, his head could roll as well as the rest of his staff if they don't come up with the championship or at least a very good showing in U.S. Cup 93. Changes in the lineup are big. Maybe none bigger than this. Thomas Dooley, tremendous experience. He may revolutionize for the U.S. anyway that central midfielder spot. What he will be able to do is really come in support of number six, John Harks, who, if you remember, on Sunday in the USA-Brazil game was pretty much isolated, operated by himself against the Brazilians, and therefore was not as effective as, as he could have been. Well, Dooley's not the only change. There's another big one. Ramos does so well in terms of passing, but he can take on players as well. The midfield's in better hands with him out there. When you're playing teams of this level, like an England team, you have to be able to get into the into the attack. And Eric Ronaldo is a player who can beat defenders, put pressure the other way. What happened to the United States against Brazil is they end up defending so much, eventually they broke down. Ronaldo had a fantastic start in Germany, cooled off towards the end, but they were withdrawing him more. He was playing as a pure striker when he first went down there, was setting the world on fire. Well, effectively for this game, the United States have brought in two first division German players because Ronaldo plays in Saarbrücken, and we've got Thomas Dooley also in the German first division, and Tab Ramos, who was playing in Spain. Great experience and offensive flair in all three of them. They could create some goals, and that's what's sorely needed by the U.S. team. I'd like to see how Wegerly and Winalda work up top. By the way, it's Eric Winalda's 24th birthday today. So happy birthday to Eric Winalda. We'll see what kind of a U.S. Cup 93 he has. He was under suspension last year during U.S. Cup 92. What a difference a year makes. We're underway. USA in the predominant white with the red and blue trim. England in the red and dark shorts. Coming back, England attacking with a chance as Barnes pushes it wide. And the linesman with a flag up right away, and Tony Miola applauds that. John Barnes, one of my all-time favorite England attackers. So many exciting years that he had at Liverpool, so many successful years when they dominated league competition. Barnes has been criticized before as well, and some people don't feel that Taylor should have stuck with him, but Taylor coached him at Watford and knows him very well. Long pass from Armstrong, looking for Wegerlin. Off the header, not enough support on that left side. And Chris Woods, the man who replaced the legendary Peter Shilton in goal for the national team, sends it very long. The U.S. will take it. Agus, intercepted. Just stolen away by England to the right corner. Barnes, low cross, deflected, it's loose. And set wide, and that treacherous turf may cause some problems here. And a dangerous chance there for England. Nigel Clough coming forward from his attacking midfield position, nearly getting his foot to this one, but the ball slipped through here to Barnes, who's on full stride. Look at him get around this ball and make sure he has his footing, slips it in for that near post run, and several England players had swipes at it, not able to come through. But this is the way that you can beat a defense. You push the ball in behind them to a man running on, and there's the good serve. It's driven low. And the chance they're just missing by Nigel Clough. No score. Opening minutes of play from Foxborough Stadium. One of nine World Cup venues for 94. On that far corner. Paul Ince, the new team captain, at least for US Cup 93. But Covijo intercepts. Taken away by England. We expect this game to be much rougher than the Brazil-USA game, which produced only 32 fouls. You see Mike Lapper there. Very hard tackling defender. He like those wet conditions. He can leave his feet more often and cover more ground. Far wing side. Sent long by number three, Dorigo from England. And Miola's right there. England known for their aerial attacks. They'll look to establish that air game and dominate in the head ball department. Jeff Angus, number 12 for the U.S., moving it upfield. Parks with a push off the foot of Lee Dixon, the Arsenal defender, all the way back to Chris Woods. And Woods, in this case, is the win. Wet conditions, a slippery ball, not the greatest of footing. It's really a handicap to defenders because if a forward just dips his shoulder, goes the other way, the defender can lose his footing and he's gone. Ramos with a long shot, a shot that he may not have tried on a drier field, but why not? Looking for that skip of the ball on the wet grass, which is so treacherous for goalkeepers. Plus, if they do stop it, they may not hold it because the ball's wet. 
Chris Woods is a teammate of John Harks of the United States, both playing for Sheffield Wednesday. Carlton Palmer, number four for England, also on that side. David Batty, number eight, leaving it on for England's Lee Dixon. Arsenal defender, number two, right side. Armstrong, the sweeper, going after him. Dixon ran out of room, but he'll get the corner as Agus knocked it out. Like New Haven, not a lot of room in the corners. Look at the United States bench. Bora Militinovic, his play continues. Wiggerly settles with a pass intended for Dooley, but it's cleared on the left wing. England looking, reversing it. Deflected, John Barnes looking for it, but it's picked up by Clavijo. Clavijo has a big edge there in terms of speed, Barnes and strength. Barnes knocking it down. England on the attack. They all have punched it. And what a collision that was at the same time as number nine, Wes Ferdinand, came in. It was deflected out. What impact. One of the main goals for the U.S. team today should be to establish some more possession game than they were able to do in their last game. They've not been able to do it here and nearly give up a goal. Miola coming all the way out. The ball deflecting then off of Les Ferdinand and into the stands. And a good chance for England, but the United States again giving the ball away on a couple of occasions. And they need to improve upon that against these higher level teams because the higher level teams will make you pay if you do give up possession. The U.S. didn't have enough of possession. That was one of their downfalls in the game against Brazil. Graham Taylor. Doesn't look like he's feeling the pressure, but he must be. Coach of the English side, he took over for Bobby Robson, who led England to a fourth place finish in World Cup 90. Left wing for Agus, number 12, and right for the USA. Trying to break a scoreless tie, a win and a save, Woods. The crowd likes that here in Foxborough. Unlike Sunday, the U.S. should be the favorite side here. Brazil seemed to be in New Haven. I think Wagerly here again is encouraged to shoot by the wet conditions. A great ball slipped through here by Agus, and he hits it first time. Winalda was in the center, but I don't think Wagerly knew he was there. It was a pretty good position that Winalda had taken up. I would have liked to see him slot that ball across, but you could never blame a guy for shooting on the first time shot, especially in wet conditions. He might be able to slip it under Chris Woods. Wiggerly with Hearts, not with anything to prove, but wanting to prove something if they can against this English side. Guys that they play against in the Premier League. England will clear it away. Lee Dixon. Sending it long. Headed by John Doyle. Back for Desmond Armstrong. Armstrong, the sweeper. Sliding it to Club Eho. Wiggerly let it go through. England will take over. That was Batty getting involved in that. Number eight. And the referee's coming over. Batty having some words. I thought with John Harks. Again, the midfield confrontations that you'll see here can be so important in establishing territorial rights around the Harks not backing down, and that's why you had that incident there. Over six minutes have passed. It's scoreless. Paul Ince can't get through. Agus didn't see or hear Batty, who just knocked him away. Batty putting it back into space. Well done to Ferdinand. On the cross, Miola's got to get there, and he does. Good read by Tony Miola. He still even had to stretch at the end to make sure he collected it. Wegerly was looking for it. England will take it back. All the way back it comes to Dixon. Batty at the midfield line. Looking long again. Barnes struggle to catch up to that. Agus. This is new grass here, by the way, at Foxborough. They used to have turf, and now they've changed that to natural grass, and they've done a lot of work in the stadium over the past several weeks. The stadium looks great. You should have seen it a few weeks ago. Ramos plays for Real Batis in Spain's second division. Doyle, good job to reverse it. We're seeing so much more the U.S. is doing in this game than they did in the entire game last Sunday against Brazil. Moving the ball with a bit more confidence. There's a chance. Woods was out. Rinalda holding, looking. Chips it with the left foot across. It looked like he was looking for Wengerle. Everything looked good until that last finish. And what I'd like to see that was that the United States had five white shirts 
in the England penalty area. So that means guys are getting into the attack. Guys like Tab Ramos, Winalda there having the composure to hold on. Here's Ramos slipping it through to Dooley. Dooley takes on his chest. A little creativity here. And in onto it is Winalda. I mean, Ramos streaking through. It is Winalda. Now he's looking back. He has a couple of options. And there are U.S. players coming in support. He tries to play it to the back post just a little bit too far. And not managed to, managing to close that off in terms of the attack. Boro Milutinovic and company looking on at a scoreless tie in Foxborough. They don't play kick the can like you used to. Back here in Foxborough, Thomas Dooley, number five. Even though he's playing in a central midfielder spot and expected to attack more, just made a nice defensive play heading it out of the area while England was attacking. Well, the idea there is to add a lot of stability to the center of the team defensively and get him forward because he has those qualities to do either role. Paul Ince will play it back. Barnes with a touch. Ince lost it. Winalda. And Ince battle. Great recovery by Ince. England's pass is deflected. U.S. back in numbers. Armstrong almost lost it. Good recovery by Armstrong for Doyle. Back to Thomas Dooley, number five, returning to the U.S. lineup. Wengerle! Wow. Almost, the lights had the flag up, but I like the initiative by Winalda and Wengerle. This team is reading each other much better than on Sunday. That was awfully close, too. Some creativity being shown by Paul, by, by Wengerle, and also by Eric Winalda in combination. Lapper chasing Barnes defensively. Doyle with some help. Number three and white for the U.S. to Agus. A giveaway. That hurts. Clough with a long shot wide of Viola. But we're seeing more of the long shots from both of these sides in some of the treacherous conditions here in Foxborough. It is still a scoreless match, and we've gone better than 11 minutes here in Foxborough, England, and the U.S. And spills are at their word. That long pass from Agus is too far for Winalda. And Chris Woods will throw it. It's batting from Leeds United. Well, the last time these two teams met was in 1985, and it was a 5 0 win for England. To perhaps gauge some of the progress of the USA team based on the result today. That was a better result than some of the previous ones. It was a 10-0 score. Going back to about 1964, I believe that's when the 10-0 score was. 29-4 is the goal margin over their last four matches, so they haven't been close. Part of the crowd that seems to be drying up a little bit here in Foxborough. Here's Sharp. What a blast. It was blocked. Armstrong clearing. Wengerly. Now it's Lapper, number two. Lapper from the U.S. Olympic team going long, too long. That one just skidded. You could see how far that ball went. It's got to be tough to play balls even on the ground or in the air like that unless you can run onto them and, and make the connection right away. Well, it's, it's difficult, difficult to control a skipping ball on the wet surface, and that's what happened there. No chance for Tab Ramos to catch it. How do you make that adjustment when you're out there, Ty, with the game going as quickly as it does to take something off or put something on well, the Well, to ball? some degree, you have to play a little bit more to feet as opposed into the space because uh, in the space, the ball just skips along and gets out of the reach of the intended target. Dooley will give it up to Clubby Hook. Number 21 for the U.S., looking for Rinalda. Taken away. England pushing forward. Clough. His father is a famous coach who just recently retired from Nottingham Forest. Coming back the other way. Agus will take it over. One thing I've liked so far is John Doyle's ability, so far at least, to dominate in the air when England have probed forward with those higher driven crosses. Uh, they've also tried to negate some at England. If you notice, any time they've gotten to the corner and also to keep it out of the reach of Mayola, they've driven the ball very low. Right, right. 
Well, this is a much better suited team for John Doyle, whose strength really is in the air as opposed to Brazil. He can play against Brazil. He loses something in quickness when they play it on the ground, but he makes up for that with the experience. But he likes these kind of games better. He likes nothing better than just to have an aerial duel with someone. That's that's what he excels. Lapper has a long chase back for it. Miola can't use his hands there in the back pass. Good communication, no trouble there. Third by Pallister. Some juggling going on. Nice exhibition. Tony Dirigo. Pretty good. Tony Dirigo, originally from Australia. Become an English citizen. Now playing for him. Member of their World Cup squad in 1990. From the back, Carlton Palmer. He's got those long strides. Right back. Puffs pass. Headed down by Ferdinand for Barnes, and then Ferdinand goes down. Barnes by himself for the moment now. A far side shot. Didn't miss the far post by much, but Ferdinand, I believe that is, is still down outside the top of the arc. Barnes giving it a try to see if he could bend the ball around Tony Miola, but the collision earlier between Doyle and Les Ferdinand looks like it took its toll on Ferdinand. They're checking out. Probably took a bump to his forehead or over his eye. You see Doyle crashing into him. I didn't see any heavy contact, but the arms were up. And here's Barnes. Look at this. Look at the bend on the ball, trying to catch that far side netting and get it around Miola. Here's another look at it. The ball played up and through, and there's Doyle going up. Now, I don't see what contact no. could have been unless he just hurt himself when he came down on no. one of his, maybe he turned an ankle, something yeah. like that. Initially, I thought it must have been uh, some type of contact head head to head or an elbow to the head look like the landing maybe even a hip pointer but Ferdinand is being helped to his feet it is still scoreless between the USA and England this is US Cup 93 so you're going on a trip please remember your parking space number oh and your flight number your gate number your seat number your confirmation number your credit card number your room number the number in your party and finally your calling card number or just forget that last one and get a phone card from Sprint. Then all you've got to know is your home phone number and four digits. It's easy. And hey, if you can't remember your home phone number, you shouldn't leave home. set for this corner Clough doing a lot of the work we talked about his father coaching him at Nottingham Forest and Clough has now just recently signed with Liverpool a highly intelligent player he's made himself useful in different parts of the field already today three million dollars was the price for Clough this one goes long but it was an infraction couldn't see from that near corner may have not been taken properly Miola will be putting the ball back in play Probably the most recognizable player on this U.S. squad. He is their team captain. He's been their main goalkeeper for about four years now. His 89 against Peru was his debut in the Meadowlands, right near his, his home. We did that game, right? The shutout? The yep. 3 nothing shutout. A good result for the United States, too, to beat Peru 3-0 in 1989. Lapper will give it up to Desmond Armstrong. We've really got a fantastic crowd. Oh, yeah. Considering the conditions. I mean, there was a downpour here for a good half hour before kickoff. Lightning and everything else. Here's Barnes. Left side on the attack. England with a chance on the cross inside. Third out. Thomas Dooley, number five in white for the U.S. Dooley dropping back there into a more defensive ro role because of the pressure and the high balls coming in from the English flanks. Dooley just arriving from FC Kaiserslautern in the Bundesliga. Right outside the 18, and excuse me, sort of foul, and Clavijo just took a nudge from Lee Sharp. None was called either way. Played out now on the right side, Dixon. 
holding. This team won both the League Cup and the FA Cup. The Arsenal come on, Gunners. Come on, come on, play! Play, fight it! That's easy to understand. He's fluent in five languages. You can say play in any language. Headed down by Pallister. Tell you, Boran Milutinovic, are watching this foul, had to like the way they were playing about five minutes ago. There is some cohesion now to the U.S. attack. I think you've got some guys that have that sort of attacking flair and how to play off of each other. With Tab Ramos in there, Eric Winalda. Now they've, they've got Harks to work with, Wegerly to work with. Dooley will come forward, too. He's a big plus there. He's almost like having an extra player. We've got about 20 minutes here in this first half of play. U.S. nothing, England nothing. Second game of U.S. Cup, 93. Harks trying to put it through. And Woods making the play. Winalda trying to run onto that. Dixon has Clough with him on the right. No pressure on Dixon. Now he'll leave it for Nigel Clough. 27-year-old player. Well, you're seeing an attempt here by the United States just to frustrate the English attack a bit. Get it to bog down. Left there for Ince. Long shot, low to the ground, but Miola's right there. And I think that is an important point because England, because of their troubles, they've not been able to really play well as of late, particularly in those World Cup qualifiers. Their confidence is pretty much shot. Their media is after them. Their fans are after them. And if they go, the longer this game goes without them really producing something, I think the more advantage it is to the United States. Doyle did some holding on to Ferdinand, then tries to come back against them. It's still loose. U.S. squad got a break, and the Doyle let go of the jersey really in the nick of time. He could have been called. But Doyle looks like he's pointing, saying that his jersey was pulled first, so who knows? It ended up being a bit of both, but it really comes down to a little bit of gamesmanship and experience defending. So there's the arm in there by Doyle, and he gets the inside track. He made sure he used it well to get some leverage. And in the end, I believe the, the call was made correctly. Uh, Doyle just getting the arm in in time. Right side, U.S. attacking, looking for the first goal. And they'll get the corner instead, their first one. And Ramos will probably take these. He's been taking them in practice. Chris Henderson had been doing that job. The English Brain Trust looking on from the far side. And Doyle coming forward. Mike Lapper coming forward. Dooley's already in there. So there's some real air power up there for the United States. Agus will take it. They want a left-footed kicker in for this. With the in-swinger, Woods comes out, it's loose! Doyle. And Woods is right there. Doyle was up there with him. Caused some problems for Woods in bringing able to bring that, being able to bring that ball in. Jeff Agus, who hails from Dallas, Texas. We have a look at it here. And this is different from Sunday's game where Tafferell went up by himself all the time. Look at Doyle, right in there, all over Chris Woods. And Chris Woods does quite well to be able to collect his thoughts and his position to be able to pull that ball in. It was a great recovery and a lot of white shirts were around. U.S. now attacking with some more numbers. Four on the attack. They were looking for Wiggerly, but the pass was off target and goes out of play. Goal kick coming up for Chris Woods, the 33-year-old keeper from Sheffield Wednesday. We still have better than 21 minutes to play in this first half from Foxborough, England, and the U.S. squad battling they're involved in a 0-0 draw. Notice these prescription spectacle lenses. Indoors, they're a pleasing blush tint. Outdoors, they darken to screen out uncomfy glare and odious UV. Indoors, back to blush, and so on. They're called Transitions Comfort Lenses, and they're made of lightweight plastic, which permits the delightful pun, light makes them dark, plastic makes them light. New Transitions Comfort Lenses. Transitions Comfort Lenses, proud sponsor of the World Series of Soccer. Will keep it alive. Looking for the first goal. 
couple of